there's an overlooked revolution taking place, and it's about to change our lives dramatically. We live in an extraordinary era, an era where multiple technological revolutions, singular turning points, change our lives. Something new is invented, and after that, everything changes. Think about what we've been witnessing for the past 200 years. The invention of the light bulb, radio, antibiotics, personal computers, smartphones, and most recently, the autonomous car. Now let's take a closer look at the autonomous car, for example. This, without a doubt, will be one of the most significant transformational turning points of our time. Lives will be saved, traffic will be reduced, it will be astonishing. But as amazing as it might be, it's only in two dimensions. It's on the ground. The revolution I'm talking about makes use of the third dimension, the aerial dimension. And with it, it brings endless possibilities. Now, mankind has always been fascinated with the aerial dimension, with flight. For hundreds of years, we try to conquer the skies, starting with the mythological Icarus and Daedalus through Leonardo da Vinci and his incredible imagination. But in the past century or so, we really kicked it up a notch, starting with the Wright brothers and their first powered flight. We then since invented rockets, satellites, jet engines, commercial flights. We've even landed on the moon. So we've successfully conquered the skies and we started utilizing it. It became much more than just man's ambition. It became something obvious part of our day-to-day -day lives. Now, this triumph over the skies was an important stepping stone toward taking flight to the new era. Because to really properly utilize the skies, we need to take the human operator out of it. Hence, we are on the brink of the unmanned aerial revolution. Aerial robots, commonly known as drones, are already affecting our lives but they are about to change our lives dramatically in the near future. Consumer drones appeared in our lives about 10 years ago, mainly due to the fast development of GPS and lithium polymer batteries that enabled these aircrafts to soar. Since then, this technology has been spreading like wildfire through various fields and applications, such as cinematography, inspection, mapping, and surveying. Now, this is a drone. It's powered by electrical engines. It's pretty simple to use, but its ease of flight is just mind-boggling. Now, the simplicity and relative low cost of this aircraft engage the imagination of millions of hobbyists around the world, using it for wild and crazy ideas. At the same time, serious projects around the world intend to make use of these aircrafts as working tools. A Chinese company called Ehang is on its way to creating the first low-altitude, short-distance transportation drone. Now, this drone can carry up to 200 pounds, and first implementation is expected to be fast organ delivery for transplant. Another ambitious endeavor is, of course, drone delivery, packages. Several corporations around the world intend to make use of these aircrafts to deliver our packages to our front door in 30 minutes or less. A bold new world is out there. But why is drone delivery such a big deal? I mean, why is delivering a package with a drone that much better? Well, the results speak for themselves. If we compare drone delivery to truck delivery, we see that CO2 emissions alone are 200 times more polluting using a truck. Cost of operation is 260 times more expensive using a truck compared to a drone. And we still haven't talked about delivery time. 
In this simulation, we chose a random route in San Francisco to compare the two methods of delivery. Now, as you can see, on average, the drone gets the job done in 20% of the time it takes a delivery vehicle. Now, that's a big difference. Even if we compare drone delivery to scooters or electric cars, the results are still unequivocal. The drone is far less polluting, less expensive, and gets the job done quicker. But is this new world really realistic? Are we actually going to get our packages delivered to our houses with drones? Really? Let's look at a couple of the challenges. First off is safety. How do you make sure a 20-pound flying machine doesn't get in the way of other aircrafts or simply crash on someone's head? Second is landing. Are we all going to have specific landing areas for drones in our houses? Seriously? Moreover, where will all these drones fly from? Who will be the people operating them? Those are big problems or big challenges. Well, as it happens to be, I love big challenges. I also love flight. Now, growing up, I saw the technological world unfold in front of me. Single products shifting entire industries. People like Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, they all built companies that changed the world. And I thought that the best way to become a player in this game would be to go to university. That's where I'll learn how to innovate on technology. Well, while bored with academia, I looked to fulfill my passion elsewhere. And I found it in Canada while walking into an electronics store to buy a juicer. I suddenly saw this shiny little box at the corner of the store with a weird-looking aircraft on it. So I ended up leaving that store with no juicer but a really cool toy drone in hand. I started flying it at every opportunity I had. I was really passionate about this technology, it was really great. I was especially enchanted by the fact that this thing could easily balance itself in mid-air. I mean, this $200 toy drone was able to hover in front of me, just staring at me. And I remember having this really intense feeling that this was not just another product. This was something big. This was something new. And from that moment on, all I could think about is how to transform this cool technology into a business. And so, I became the first licensed drone pilot in Israel. Shortly after, I started one of the first companies in the world to give services with drones. Here we ran applications such as cinematography, mapping, inspection, agriculture. We became experts, learning the bits and the bytes of the technology. Most importantly, learning what it can and cannot do. Several months after, this guy approached me he knew we were into drones, and he asked if we could provide security services with our drones for a big solar field in the middle of the desert. Now, this seemed kind of odd to me. I mean, what would be the point of using a drone 24-7? You might as well have two security guards. That would be less expensive. But then it hit me. What if you could leave the drone pilot out of it? What if you could have the drone fly itself and secure the area? What if you could have a completely automated drone system where the drone flies out in a pre-scheduled mission, patrols the area, secures it, and then lands, come back to land in a box? We need a drone in a box. Now, this was a big idea. This was something Lockheed Martin would attempt. And with all due respect, at the point, we were just a bunch of wild horses ready to gallop, but with no real experience in such complex engineering. But if you come to think of it, so were the Wright brothers, as they competed against a group of well-funded PhDs. And we all know who won that competition, the guys from the bicycle store. So we decided to go for it. Now, after starting two companies in the space, we knew we could innovate and bring something new into this world. But this was a completely different ballgame. This was a pilotless, automated drone system. It's the holy grail of drones, just like the autonomous car is the holy grail of future transportation. Now, existing technology at the time was for toys, so even the components we need were not even in existence. We had to build everything ourselves from scratch. The drone itself, the PCB, the battery, 
We had to turn it from a toy to a tool. Think about it. It's a completely self-sufficient flying robot. Just to get this thing to land itself precisely was a humongous challenge. And so, for the last 18 months or so, a hundred very talented engineers have been working around the clock to make this happen. Four months ago, we nailed it. Our product was ready. So, we have the airbase, a durable weatherproof docking station that shelters the drone from the environment. It also hosts a robotic arm that replaces payloads and batteries. We have the drone itself that can carry different sensors and cameras. We have the software that operates the entire system and also analyzes the data captured. We have completely removed the human element out of the procedure. And for the first time ever, a drone operates completely automatically. Launch, fly, land, repeat. Now we see drones fusing, in, fusing into our future in three steps. First step, which we are already in, is deploying our systems in safer, unpopulated environments, such as seaports, refineries, mines, and fabrication facilities. In these environments, we fly missions such as security, inspection, mapping, surveying. Now the drone is proving itself to be an invaluable tool utilizing the third dimension to capture and analyze aerial data. We are flying our systems 24-7 to make sure that they are safe, secure, and get the job done. Second step, and after accumulating hundreds of thousands of flight hours, is to use these systems in cities. Most applications would firstly be around emergency response, where the risk-reward ratio is very low. So think about a 911 emergency situation where someone has a heart attack somewhere in the city. A defibrillator can maybe save his life. You could get that defibrillator to that person in a couple of minutes. That could be life-saving. Third and final step of our big vision is everyday commercial use. Drone systems will be deployed in various locations around the city enabling customers to use them for applications such as package delivery, precise mapping for autonomous cars, real estate, construction. You could come up to one of our air bases, swipe your credit card, and send your house key to your kid who's locked outside. That's going to be pretty cool. Of course, there are risks, but those risks could be mitigated. Pre-designated aerial highways, what we call skyways, will route the drones to fly over unpopulated areas and rooftops to reduce the risk. Low altitude deploying parachutes will also reduce the risk. Mainframe software will communicate between the drones and other aircraft in the airspace to make sure that there's no aerial collisions. Multiple air bases will serve as la launch and land stations and to replace batteries and load your packages. Let's take a glimpse into this future.
sooner than you thought. This is the future of drones. Thank you.